Chaser Report is recorded on Gadigal land. Striving for mediocrity in a world of excellence, this is The Chaser Report. Hello and welcome to The Chaser Report with Dom and Charles. And today's episode is going to be full of good news, wonderful, uplifting news. Only good news. Only good news, exciting stories. And Uh, I don't want this to be some sort of sarcastic thing where we say it's going to be good news and it's all bad news. No, This is good, good news. It is fabulous news. I've got good news on the economy. Yay! I've got excellent news about a friend of the podcast, Ben Robert Smith. He's back in action. Oh, okay. Radio. And And maybe not so good news for Afghan farmers. An old friend is back in the news. A man called Lyle Shelton, formerly of the Australian Christian Lobby. What the voice needed (laughs) was Lyle Shelton's input. Mr. Success, I think, is his nickname. And, in fact, it's fair to say that Mm. those who followed the same-sex marriage process might actually see Lyle Shelton's emergence at the (laughs) 11th hour as an excellent sign. (laughs) We'll bring you all of that wonderful news and more in just a moment. Where to start, Charles? Can we start with Lyle Shelton? Because I am desperate with... to know what he... Because he's the guy, I'm pretty sure he's the guy during the marriage equality debate who came out with the idea that people would start getting married to bridges. That was actually former Senator Erica Betts. Was it? Um, yeah, but look, they're all in, in cahoots. Because I think it wasn't the whole point that Lyle Shelton was in the Liberal Party, wasn't he? Mm, uh, for... Yeah, I think so. He's run for Parliament before. And he was he was this flaming bright light within the conservative movement. He was sort of seen as the next great white hope. Very white. Very white. On the white. He's now in Family First, so he's now the kind of remainder of mm. that kind of Christian base. However, most of the Christians I know despise Lyle Shelton mm. and all that he stands for. But the thing is, he never really, like every movement he's ever attached himself to turns out to sort of fail dismally. Yes, yes. The, the time when Family First got people elected was, uh, that was Senator Steve Fielding with his giant bottle suit, that's not right. Lyle Shelton. Yes. Lyle Shelton, he was on Q&A all the time. He was basically... Oh, that's right. And he, he launched that uh, Get Up for, what was it called? It was Get Up for Conservatives. Oh, there's Advance it, Australia. It was called... No, no, still no. Around. Well, Advance Australia is behind the no vote, but there was, a, yeah, there was another one. There was one. another one called Way Down or something, or Get Down. That's Remember, right. Remember there was one. So he, he basically has been on the wrong side of many, many, many debates. Many. He's lost over and over again. Many. But this might be the one he finally wins. That's what happens in political things. When people sense that there's some sort of victory impending, they just attach themselves like parasitic flies. Yeah, quite possibly. So anyway, so he's come out and his claim, Charles, is actually, can you can you guess what he thinks is going to happen if the voice to okay. Parliament gets up on My on guess Saturday? is that if the voice gets up, then Aboriginal people will start getting married to bridges. <laughs> no. No. Um, okay. But I suppose if that was what they wanted... Mm. They could say so yes. through the voice in Parliament would need to at least be aware. Yeah, they'd that go, thing. hang on, have you considered about our need to get married to bridges? And then that would be the decline of Western civilization. Well, the decline of Western civilization bit is right because yes. what's going to happen, according oh. to Lyle Shelton, yes. if the voice gets up, is West- Christianity will end. Oh, Christianity uh, will end. Another reason to vote yes. Uh, he says. <laughs> so that wait a minute. We wouldn't have Catholic priests fiddling with the altar boys. They'd find a way, wouldn't they? Love well, will no, find but a if way. they didn't have the cover of their religion, what would they? Yeah, they'd just they'd be, just be bog pe- standard. pedos in weird clothes. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, pedos in dresses. So what he says is, is that it will be a lever, a lever for anti-Christian ideology. The notion of listening to First Nations would somehow be a lever for anti-Christian ideology, and he's worried. Yeah, how so how does this quite, this doesn't quite match, I don't understand He how. says it would embed Indigenous spirituality in the Constitution. That well, we'd have to take account of the fact that before the First Fleet arrived, before Westerners yes, arrived, yes. there were First Nations you'd, religions here in Australia. You'd have to acknowledge that yes. the world didn't begin, you know, whatever it is, 5,000, 6,000 years ago. Oh, I, and I, that I, people I, existed before then who had beliefs different to life. Well, that's true. That's true. If yes. creationism is true and the world was created by, by God 7,000 years ago, there couldn't possibly have been no, exactly. uh, First Nations people here 65,000 yeah. years ago. Okay. So it'll lead to the downfall of Christianity. So the good news is this is really an embodiment of the way that the No campaign mm. has evolved. Because, Charles, you'll be pleased to know he's not against First Nations people at all. He's not a racist. What he is, mm. is in favour of reconciliation and recognition. So he started a group at the 11th hour. It's called Christians for Equality. And Christians for Equality wants reconciliation, mm. 
They want recognition the same as Peter Dutton, but they also want to prevent Australia's constitution from being used as a lever for anti-Christian ideology. But they want to do this in the spirit of reconciliation. I'm not sure whether he's referring to reconciliation with First Nations or between Christians and the increasingly secular world. I don't know what he's trying to get at there. But it's important to note that no one in this debate, Charles, Mm. no one is against recognition, just that they don't want recognition in the form that First Nations have asked for. They just want recognition on their own terms. Which is another referendum going, you know, someone was here before. Yeah. What, you know, what ifs? Does it does doesn't actually mean it. anything. Doesn't mean anything. We're just going to say yeah. that people were here. Sure, you were here, but that doesn't actually have any consequences, okay? I think I'd make a good no campaign. You, you should, wouldn't you I? should get on that, yeah. the 11th hour, the 12th hour, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. I, I could piece, join the winning side. You should. Oh, well, no, we're not allowed to say 5:55 that. 5.55 p.m. Yeah. On, uh, on Saturday. No, I saw, um, just briefly, Anne Toomey, who's a constitutional scholar, mm. quoted in a piece by me. Megan Davis, also a constitutional scholar, saying that, in fact, having the recognition in the constitution without a specific form like the voice creates mm-hmm. a massive constitutional dilemma because is the court supposed to take the recognition that there was actually someone here before the Westerners arrived and the constitution was existed? Because the constitution itself is in violation of Aboriginal sovereignty. So if you acknowledge Aboriginal sovereignty... If you sovereignty, do recognition, yes, then you're sort of fucking over you your own constitution. You attention that wouldn't be there yes. if you're just saying there's a voice. Yes, because that sort of gives a mechanism by which the law can exist and the constitution can exist while also recognising the First Nations. Yeah, so Megan Davis's point is that that sort of soft, what's called a soft recognition is actually legally very problematic. Anyway, so Lyle Shelton has uh, has gotten in on this. The one spokesman for Christians for Equality, mm. look, he's another part of Advance, Advance Australia again. He wants to take Australia forward to an Australia with no recognition. Uh, no, he wants to take Australia forward by making sure that it adheres only to a 2,000-year-old Book. Exactly. That, that will advance Australia by only pinning ourselves to something that was written 2,000 years ago. So a lot of Christians are voting yes. And in fact, the, the church not far from where we live, Charles, in, in Sydney's inner west, oh, yeah, hosted Anthony Albanese and lots of other yes campaigners in the past week. And they felt the, that Christianity was compatible. And they're a conservative church. Like, I know Sydney the Anglicans. Yeah, I know yeah. the priest there. My son is friends with his son. So So basically there are lots of Christians who are in favour of yes, because they want better outcomes for First Nations people, given the gap and all that. But Lyle Shelton, as ever, is Mm. not one of them. So there you go, Lyle Shelton's back. That's the first bit of good news. But I think that is good news for the yes campaign. It is, because historically speaking, every time Lyle Shelton goes for something, he loses. Yep. He is... The curse of any cause. Yeah. So if... If only he'd joined the no cause a couple of weeks ago. So if yes wins on Saturday, yeah. we will point to the arrival of Lyle Shelton to yes. the moment when yes's victory became inevitable. And it won't be Nathan Cleary, you know, that tipped the ballot. Because you know how the polls are all coming back for yes now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It won't be Nathan Cleary coming out. In no, well, it won't be yes. Briggs and Victoria won't, and Jenna, that wonderful video that they It won't be made. all that, which actually, you know, has done. You know that Vic and Jenna were saying yesterday that they have to update their social media because in the industry you've got to tell everyone how many yeah. views you've had. And this has done more views than their entire rest of their canon ever. So they did very well with yeah. the contact traces with you. Yeah. And this has done much well, better. Well, Taika Waititi retweeted yeah. it. And, and Jason Momoa, a- Aquaman himself, yes. shared that video. So oh, that so. was more news there. Okay, so Lyle Shelton as the potential canary in the coal mine of, of yes, winning a surprise victory, frankly, at this stage. That is good news item one. Can we possibly fit more good news in this podcast, Charles? Yes, I think we definitely can. After this. The Chaser Report. News you can't trust. Okay, so the second bit of good news, do we want to go to Ben Robert Smith or do we want to go to the news about the economy? No, well, let's do Ben Robert Smith because I feel like the economy one's going to be a sarcastic one. (laughs) Yeah, do you think? Okay, so Ben Robert Smith. Whereas Ben Robert Smith is just endlessly entertaining. So he's continuing his defamation fight. Really? So does this mean we're not allowed to call him a proven war criminal? No, no, you can call him a murderer. You can say um, the court has found him to be... A, a murderer. But isn't he appealing that? Yes, but until he wins the appeal. Oh, okay. Guilty he, until proven innocent. Well, he wasn't guilty because it was, it was found oh, it wasn't yeah. a criminal process, it right? Yeah. It was on the balance of probabilities. Justice Anthony Pasenko, in a decision on the 1st of June, said, no, nah, you killed people, mate. Yes. You're a killer. Yes. You're a murderer and you're a war criminal. That's what he said. I'm not exaggerating. No. We actually, I'm not defaming Ben Robert Smith. That is the view of the court. In our War on 2023 show, mm. which we we're rehearsing today, actually, we've got the Defo Awards this year. We're going to oh, present yeah. it because it's a red carpet event. We're going to dress up in tuxedos. We've nice. got the 
Defo Award. And the Defo Award for Future War Crime Tribunals in Geneva goes to Ben Robert Smith. That's a bit of a spoiler. He'll be so proud. So, proud. <laughs> so, so he's fighting on, having lost the federal court case. He's appealing, mm. but here's the twist. Uh, he's been told that before he can take it to the next stage, mm. before he can even go back into the courtroom and protest his innocence once more, he has to pay $910,000 in case he loses. Basically, because the Not newspapers wait, wait, won. 910000 in case he what? Yeah. I don't understand. So he's had why. to pay. He's had to pay all this money into the bank account as a bond. As something. a bond, yeah, So right. that if he loses, because hasn't he already declared bankruptcy? So, or certainly he's, we know that he's under financial strain. Yeah. So he's had to pay this money so that the newspaper's legal costs are covered if he loses the next stage. Yes, because otherwise they'll be going. You are suing us, but we can't actually recover. Can't the get cost. the money back. Yes. Mm. The good news is he's got a payment plan. There's so one payment of three hundred and ten grand and two of three hundred grand. Well, that's what you do. I mean, that's actually roughly the same size as my electricity bill this yeah, month. that's so, right. Did um, you ask for a payment? I put it on the payment, payment plan. plan. Yeah. So you get in there. The costs so far have already been $25 million. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and no wonder he's struggling. That's interestingly, like- Kerry Stokes funded the lawsuit so far, but under a loan agreement. So oh. I wonder what will happen with that. I don't think you'd want to owe money to Kerry Stokes somehow. Well, it was funded by seven. Although, actually. I'm not sure I would want to be the who Kerry Stokes asked to recover the money from Ben Robert Smith. Well, his but own you company. You so, so Kerry Stokes' own company took over the debt and paid it out. So I think he's a long way in the hole. Right, okay. So how does the conversation transpire? Well, hey, Ben, mate, you know how I gave you that $25 million? Um, can I have it back? And then Ben Robert Smith says, ah, yes, the court case found that I'm a, <laughs> I'm a war brutal murderer. murderer. Uh, Just walk over to the edge of this cliff yeah, and let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So that's where we are. Ben Robert Smith is back. But the notion that he's got to pay 900 so, grand even to go to court to begin with, I think is rather fascinating. So will there be more evidence in court and stuff like that? Because that was always the juicy bit, wasn't it? Which was like, does Ben Robert Smith now get to dig up his laptop that he buried or something? Oh, I thought and... you were going to say dig up the bodies. Okay, <laughs> oh, the, sorry. But you know what I mean? Because like, you know how he presents evidence and goes, see, this is in my favour. I burn my laptops and stuff like that. Mm. Like a lot of his own testimony, his own witnesses. Was, was self harm. Was self harming. Are we going to see more of that or is this more of a sort of legalistic? I mean, you've got to hand it to him that he's so good at hurting humans. Yes. That he's hurt himself. Enormously. Yeah. So, look, it's going to happen in late February. And I don't know because in general terms, if you're appealing, mm. uh, you've got to find the, an error of law or They're usually fact. boring. They're boring mm. cases. They're yeah. usually fairly technical. Yeah. So I don't know how the case is going to go. But basically what this means is, Charles, late February, mm. get the popcorn. Yes. Can you, can you order some special popcorn? Yes. We should have Ben Robert Smith's popcorn, popcorn containers. Cups. Yes. Yeah, microwave popcorn. Uh, okay. and, and it's either you make it in the microwave or you basically just shoot it <laughs> and uh, the heat of the bullet will, will pop all the corn. I think that would work. Yeah. If you shot a bag of popcorn, let's say there was yeah. a, a detainee's face on it, oh. uh, and you shot the bag of popcorn, the heat would make it pop, wouldn't it? Yes. We've got to test that one out. Anyway, that's our second piece of good news. And the third piece of good news, Charles, this is encouraging stuff. About the economy, I'm so relieved because as far as I'm concerned, the economy is so shit at the moment. Like everyone, everyone I know, like, yeah. you know, you have conversations with them about renting and stuff like that and they end up crying in front of you. Yeah, no, it's just it's, embarrassing. Can we have one of those conversations actually after the end of this podcast? That would be really <laughs> helpful just on a personal note. Basically, the, the great news, the RBA has come out. Now, the first bit of good news is Philip Lowe is not there anymore. He's gone. What? He's yeah, gone? he's gone. No, he's, he's oh, not. Oh, I he's assumed. No the, the I knew he was on the way out, but I assumed that was like some sort of over five years on a fixed rate or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, that, that would be so true, wouldn't it? That'd be exactly what they'd do. He's probably still being paid. Well, I imagine so. Yeah. yeah I mean, right. an important job like he did of just putting out all the money. No, but Michelle Bullock is the new, uh, the first female governor. However, they've got another generic white guy to take over her old job as assistant governor, a guy called Christopher Kent, who has glasses and looks like a... He looks pipe. like Philip Lowe. Actually, it could be. Phil. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, no. That's it, what's happened. It's, it'd be hard to tell two of them apart. Uh, hello. My name is Christopher Clark 
Ken. <laughs> so I haven't heard of this guy before, but this is his first big statement. And let me say, they usually just appoint the assistant governor as the next governor. And let's say the RBA is going to remain pretty consistent. Here's what he said. He's come out and said in a speech that the great news is what the RBA has been doing has been working. It's very, very good news that it's working well. Wait a minute. So what is it working? Because I thought their aim was to sort of crash the economy. Yes, that's right. So <laughs> retailers are discounting their prices yeah, because so otherwise nobody's buying anything. So, so retailers are struggling and in genuine economic pain. Yes, they are. And yeah, so what so they're doing is they're having to just slash everything to the to the to actually yeah. bone. I imagine laying off staff too is yeah. part of this process and yeah. so on. So what it means is that the monetary policy is working. The mm. rate increases have been working. Yes. He's also noting that the full impact was still to be felt. So what that yeah. means, reading between the lines, is that there is more pain. Even if they don't put the rate up anymore, mm. the effects of that are still going to pay out. So there's people out there who are currently feeling okay mm. who've got some pain in the mail. Oh, great. Very oh, slowly coming is, through. Uh, such a good news story. It means that the RBA is working. They're fixing the economy. Yeah. So the uh, the fixed rate loans are ending. So everyone's but, rates are jumping up dramatically. Yeah. And in the next 12 months, all those people who fixed their rates at a low rate, they've been avoiding the pain so far. Yes. They're not going to be able to anymore. And the great news is that what they're doing is they're causing a whole lot of pain, but then they're not solving things like the rental crisis. Well, so God, no. nobody can afford their rent, but also there is still nothing to rent anyway. No. Yeah. Buy a tent if you can afford a tent. Yes. It's, um, a, it's a tental crisis. It's a tental it'll, turn, cri- it'll turn into a tent crisis. That's a great term. Yeah. It's a tental crisis. So if I can just quote the assistant governor here. Required mortgage payments are at a record share of household disposable income. Isn't that fantastic? That's great. So and that expect because ANZ every week now texts me reminding me that I'm going to have to pay my mortgage. And that record will rise further as more fixed rate loans expire. So those who've managed to avoid the pain so far, don't worry. Yeah. It's e- coming. Even the people who are really shrewd and incredibly wise back during the pandemic, we're coming to get you. So yeah, the RBA is doing its job. Well done, RBA. Well done, new Assistant Governor Christopher Kent. The entirely tone deaf owner of this speech suggests that the RBA is going to keep doing what it does. Isn't stability a good thing in these times, in these uncertain times? Well, we've only really got Albo to thank for that. Reserve Bank going to Reserve Bank. Ben Robert Smith going to Ben Robert. That's what he does now. He's a professional sewer. And the other amazing bit of good news is that Lyle Shelton once again out there on the wrong side of history. It, it really feels like we're back under ScoMo, aren't we? It's very... ScoMo esque. It's lo- it's nice. It's Pulling familiar the somewhere. He's, he's it's re- lovely. He's got a new book coming out. Yeah. yeah, about Christianity. None of this writing your autobiography. Yeah, ScoMo no. understandably doesn't want to look back at his life story because there've been some mistakes no. there. He's just going to write about Jesus. He's going to write about why we should all follow him to the church. I swear he's going to become a motivational speaker. I bet you a billion dollars. Who's he going to motivate? Put people in the opposite direction? How's that going to work? <laughs> Maybe that's what Lyle Sheldon is scared of. Is Scott Morrison's on the speaker circuit, and people? It's the end of Western civilization. They're fleeing Christianity. <laughs> It's the ScoMo effect. It's Scott Morrison, the one person who can make Lyle Shelton look like a popular influencer. Our gear is from Road. We're part of the Iconoclast Network. Catch you next time. See ya.